Hi, I'm Trisha Morris from Club Scrap. Today's project is to assemble eight 12 by 12 scrapbook pages using our beautiful bandana page kit. The order of business will be to trim all of the papers that came in the box, and then we'll file them onto the appropriate pocket or pile, and then finally assemble those pages. So we'll place every element onto the appropriate page, and I'll talk over some finishing touches with you. And then all you'll have to do when we're done with class is stick everything down, add your photos and memories, and you'll have eight 12 by 12 finished pages with no waste. So let's go ahead and get started. So in order to get from our kit to our finished pages, we just have a very prescribed series of steps that we can follow to make it as easy and efficient as possible. I do have my bandana kit here. I've got a printed copy of the instructions and the instructions are included with every kit we offer and you can find those under the instruction tab of our website. I'm also working with our accordion pocket file and this is gonna help us stay organized during the trimming process. This little lip here on the front of the file fits underneath my trimmer base and then holds everything vertical for easy filing. And then I'm using my Fiskars guillotine style trimmer. I do have a video about why I like this trimmer so much and the best tips on how to make use of it if you're interested. So as I mentioned, we need to sort the papers that came in the box. We'll be using all of them. So let's put them in the order they'll be used. The first piece I want you to find is this paisley print. It's usually near the top of the stack. I want you to place it on your trimmer base, face down, and then find one sheet of the red, and then two of the black planes. Now there should be two of each sheet in your kit, so two black. And then from the back of your stack, you're gonna find some cut aparts. So the first one I want you to find has this larger blue band on the left and then put that face down. And then the next one will have like the smaller images, three hearts on there. Put that one face down on your trimmer base. Next up, I want you to find one of the scarf prints. That's this one. So put that face down. Anything with the print goes face down. And then our soft white. You're gonna love this. It has a beautiful a felt-like texture on it. Next, we're gonna take two aqua planes. So again, the two of them. Then the remaining paisley print face down, the remaining white. I do think it has a, a side that is more deeply textured. I'll put that face down. Then the scarf print and the final red print. That should be everything as far as the 12 by 12s that came in the box. Next, let's take the photo mats that came in your kit. These are pre-trimmed to four and a quarter by six and a quarter. So they're all ready to go for... Um, matting your photos, plus they kind of extend the life of the rest of the paper in your kit. So let's get these filed into the appropriate pocket or pile if you don't have the, the pocket itself. Plus I can help you get one of those if you need, if you need help getting one made. Okay, so let's take two black photo mats now and we're gonna put them in pocket one and two. And then two red photo mats, also going in one and two. Next up, three aqua photo mats, all three of them for pocket three and four. One of the soft white photo mats for three and four. Next, another soft white photo mat in pocket five and six. A red photo mat for five and six. Another black photo mat in five and six. And the remaining soft white that goes in seven and eight. Now you're probably wondering, what about this other big sheet? And yours might all still be together in one piece. And if that's the case, just go ahead and separate all of the, the different elements that came in that die cut sheet. And they should pop up pretty easily. Now from the center piece of this sheet, let's pop the smallest square into pocket five and six. And then this medium sized frame goes in three and four. And now for this larger frame, we are gonna trim it kind of in half. So you can just put it in the trimmer any old way. I'm just looking up from here to here, kind of lining that up with the edge of my blade and just check it at all points. Center it as best as you can. Stabilize the piece on the, with a clear bar and just turn this into two separate pieces. And both of these go in pocket seven and eight. We also have this larger frame. Now these make some really beautiful corner, de like decorative corner elements. So instead of leaving it whole, I'm gonna place this into my trimmer at six. And it might be a little wobbly, that's okay. Just stabilize it. And once you find the six inches here, 
and a slice and then rotate and cut at six again just to separate that out. You could probably use like, scissors too. I mean, it's it's not that big of a piece that we're trimming, but I like to get that measurement right at the six inch mark. Easy, easy. Okay, so two of these corners, place them in pocket one and two, and then the other two go in pocket uh, three and four. Okay, now we finally get to trim just a regular old sheet of paper. And I want you to place this uh, paisley print into the trimmer so that this largest you know, shape here is on the, the lower left corner. And then you have this flower-like shape in the upper left corner. All we have to do here is trim at seven inches. And both of these pieces are used in layout five and six. I'm just gonna pop them in my uh, folder here, but I'm gonna do so at an angle so that I can still see the numbers on the left side of the pocket. Next up, I'll take one sheet of this bread and let's trim this at 10 and a quarter. So if you're new to measuring on this, just remember uh, the quarters can be found, if, if I go 10 and a quarter, first I find the whole number 10. Then I go left, one vertical column for the 10 and a quarter. Stabilize on the clear bar and slide down to six inches. Then rotate the six by 12 and cut at eight and four. Gather up the three four by sixes. They should all be the same size for that one piece and they go in pocket five and six. And then we have this uh, four and a quarter inch strip here. Let's cut that at nine and three quarters and five and a half. The five and a half piece, pocket three and four. The square, pocket five and six. And you have this smaller rectangle for three and four as well. The long strip is used in five and six. We're moving on to page two of our instructions. Take one sheet of the black. Remember, just one. There should be another one to the left of your trimmer here. And we'll cut this one at six and a quarter. Then rotate the piece so it's horizontal and cut at eight and a half at four and a quarter. And it gives me two pieces of the same size, the one in the trimmer base, the one that just fell. They're the same, going in pocket seven and eight. And then you have the smaller rectangle here. We'll trim at six and three. Gather the two rectangles you made, pocket five and six. And I regret to inform you that this this is a scrap. I know, I know. <laughs> now this next strip, be careful here. It's just a little bit of a different uh, trimming than we normally do. But we're gonna cut at seven and a half and three and three quarters. The two pieces you just made that are a little smaller, those go in pocket five and six. And then there's a larger one that fell off the end first. That's for three and four. And no scraps from that one other than that little piece. Again, uh, this is going to be kind of a wacky trimming job here, so just take it with me one cut at a time. We're going to get start out at a really big number, 11 and 3 quarters, and then go to 11 and a half. Allow those papers just to pile up next to the blade after you trim them. Then 10 and 3 quarters. 10. Nice whole number there for you. 9. Eight and six and a quarter. Wow, that was a lot of cuts there. Rotate and continue to just pay close attention with me here. First cut 11 and three quarters, then eight and a half, four and a quarter. You have two pieces, the one in the base, the one that just fell. They're the same for seven and eight, pocket seven and eight. Now this rectangle here, just be very careful again with me. <laughs> we'll start out at four and a half, and then two and a quarter. You made two rectangles the same. One of them goes in pocket one and two, the other five and six. Then this little rectangle fell off the end. We're actually gonna trim this 
And, and when you do that, I like to bring it way up to the top here and just kind of find my measurement. In this case, it's three inches. Just use your index finger on the clear bar to stabilize and then slide it over to one and a half, same deal. I mean, even though it's such a small piece, you can still make those cuts pretty easily. Once you can dig it out of the trimmer, you've got two rectangles the same for pocket five and six. And then from the end, you're gonna have a small scrap and then another little scrap from, from the um, end of the strip there. Now we have this gigantic pile of strips and I'm, I just pull them all up off the tabletop with the piece that fell most recently on the top of the stack. This wide one goes in pocket three and four. And then you have two more skinnier that are the same. These are one by 12. They also go in pocket three and four. And then you have the next strip going in one and two and the next three final strips. So you got this wide one, it's not really all that wide. Two really skinny pieces, all of that goes in five and six. Here we've arrived at our cut aparts and you've got uh, some X marks the spot here on the corners. So I'm gonna align, um, I'm gonna remove this paper from the outside edges, all four edges of this cut apart very carefully. So I'll place it in my trimmer and this first cut that I make, I'm, going to just leave a little bit of the paper that needs to go away on there because now when I, when I rotate the paper I can more easily see where the cut where that guide mark lines up with the outside edge of my blade on the trimmer so I will align it top and bottom I can now see the blade at the bottom as well as the top then rotate and slice again to remove that excess paper. We were shooting for the perfect 12 by 12 here. Now I can look over here on my left, find the 12, that lines up nicely. One more rotation for that little shaving. And indeed it is a little shaving. And now I have all four edges trimmed and a nice 12 by 12. So I placed this in the trimmer now so the word friends is on the right. We'll cut at 10 and a half. And then nine, eight and a half, eight, five and three quarters, and three and a half. All right, to this large strip here, seven and eight. And the next one, one and two. Happiness, one and two. Here we have these two uh, little strips with the dots. One of them goes in pocket one and two, and the other in five and six. The red design, five and six, and friends, three and four. Easy peasy. <laughs> okay, now let's do the same thing here with this other sheet. Again, the paper needs to be removed from the outer edges. And I went shy of the line there so I could rotate and get a better view of where the line is. And looking at my 12 inch mark now, get my shaving and get rid of all these little pieces. We're back to where the, uh, the black strips should be on your right and we'll cut at 11, 10, nine and a quarter, eight and a half, six and a half, and four, lots of cuts there, four. Rotate and trim this at 10, making sure the, the blue is on the right, and six. The six inch piece and the square both go in pocket five and six, and the small one from the end, three and four. Let's trim this next strip. Now the journaling prompt should be on your right and we'll cut at eight and a half and five. This is gonna be a tag shape. So while it's here, if you want, you can just trim the triangles from the corner just to save a little time later on. Looks nice. Pocket one and two. And then this vertical journaling prompt, three and four. And the horizontal one, seven and eight. All right. The next strip here, I want that journaling prompt on the right. 
cut at nine and six. Now you've got some hearts here. Um, two of the hearts are used in layouts. Let's see, let's get this straightened out here. I'm gonna just trim them a real rough cut and then we can do the details later. So the black and the blue, black and blue heart, no, the black and the red heart rather, those go in pocket one and two. And then the blue heart I used in layout five and six. And then this last paisley one and two. Okay, we got this journaling prompt here with the black uh, image on the top. That's uh, one and two. And then the one with the teal on the left edge, that's five and six. For the remaining strips, these two go in pocket three and four with the red artwork. And then the black artwork, seven and eight. I got two little triangular uh, scraps here. So the good news, I guess, is that after you make... Uh, after you make eight pages, this is what you have left over. Oh, and then, of course, if you want to count these, you can. But that's not bad. That's not bad for a set of eight pages, if you ask me. Threw those away, and I'm going to support my accordion pocket file here while I lock my trimmer blade and get rid of that. Set these aside. And then you have the remaining stack of papers here. So just take the whole thing, the whole stack with all of the pages that you sorted, and grab the top sheet and slide it over and then create the base for a double page spread, okay? Now in your instructions, if you turn to the last page, page four, look at the bottom and look for the words that say layouts seven and eight. This is how we always do this. We always start out with layout eight, seven, and work our way to layout one. So when you are finished with this workshop, everything will be you know, just fitted on the appropriate page. We can talk through the finishing touches, and then you'll come in with your favorite kind of adhesive. This is what I use. You can use any kind of two-way tape and um, adhere everything, and then you can just simply add your photos. I'm gonna take a look here in my pocket labeled seven and eight. Take everything out of there. Check to make sure it's empty. And now I, I do like to distribute the items from the pocket. Uh, from my hand to the page rather than the tabletop to my page. It's just a little bit easier. And to start things off, I actually added this die cut. The reason I cut it through the middle is so that I could spread it between the two pages on left and right. So it looks kind of cool there. Now on the left here, I've got this vertical strip and I actually put it right to the edge of the page and then this guy and I flanked it with the other one that matches. I had a lot of great artwork to work with because we had the added die cut this month. Okay, what else is happening here? Two vertical four and a quarter by six and a quarter mats are gonna go up here. Now, I think I framed them. So you have this little artwork here and I think I kind of have it in there like so. And then this one is horizontally along the bottom, kind of in the same spot, relatively speaking, with that framed piece. Now on the left, I have one horizontal photo mat right about here. I wanted to see if I could optimize seeing this portion of that cute frame. And then beneath it, I added this journaling prompt and then the other horizontal piece right next to it. Quite easy as far as layouts go. I added a three-part bow with the a beautiful, uh, I think this is like a maybe a seven eighth inch cotton ribbon here. And it just adds a little touch to, to this. That's really, really sweet. Now I do have a video on how to make a three part bow. It's called Ribbon Basics and you can find it on our channel. And uh, take a, taking a quick look here at the finished page, one little touch, I did tuck the photo mat behind uh, the cut apart a little bit here, or rather the die cut in that spot. And then on the facing page, you can see just a couple of additions. There's that sweet little three-part bow. Isn't that darling? I love that. It just It's a simple bow. It finishes it off and doesn't add a lot of bulk to the page. Then we have those uh, cute little embellishments that came in the kit. So I'm going to plop one of them there. And I think you have a set of three of those. And then this other one I added right there on the journaling prompt. Kind of a nice tie-in. Very, very simple pages to put together. I think you'll appreciate that uh, in the new year. Just something nice and easy to make. Then I will lift the base of page seven and slide it on top of eight. And then once again, do the slide, just one sheet at a time. 
to reach the aqua. And here we have layouts five and six listed with aqua. Sure enough, left base and right base are aqua. Then all the contents of pocket five and six, got a lot going on in there. A lot of little pieces. This, um, this page kind of gives me the sense of like a jigsaw puzzle, but way easier because it's not a thousand pieces. <laughs> and you don't have to put it back in the box when you're done, right? Okay, let's begin with this really large piece. And I'm gonna plop that along the right edge of this side and then along the bottom edge of the left. So I kind of like how that divides the space. Then to transition from one color to the other, I'm gonna use this really thin strip of black. Now, when I add these strips, I never put adhesive on the back of the strip in this situation. I always start out, and I'll just show you, I start out by adhering the sheet to the bottom and just line everything up real nicely. Perfect. Then I keep my bookbinding glue in a needle tipped applicator. So bookbinding glue is a product we carry that I absolutely love. And I load it into an, an applicator like this and I keep it in the back of my tape dispenser. So the glue with it with the needle pointing down and that keeps the glue near the front of the needle at all times. So it's ready to dispense. So I'm just gonna run this glue along the edge of my piece that I've already adhered and then come in with my strip and slide it down in there and then it just kind of clicks into place. Isn't that nice? Just a super easy way to adhere a thin little strip of paper uh, with a very economic uh, type of adhesive for sure. But branding glue is like really the, a great option for stuff like that. So for starters, we're looking for some red mats here and I want you to find the smallest ones, okay? So these are small, two smaller ones. And then there's some black mats that are even smaller and they should nest, okay? So if that's not happening, keep switching till you find the right pieces because there's a larger black mat too. That one's gonna go, well, first of all, <laughs> let's take this black strip here and the red dot. That's gonna nest right on there. I've got to determine where that goes, it's going to be this. These little black rectangles kind of determine the height of this border strip here. Then the larger black photo mat is going to nest with no one will ever be as entertained by us as us. <laughs> okay, so that's nested there. Oh my goodness, so many things going on in this page. Um, across the bottom here, I'm going to go with this red strip and then nested on top of that. Okay. There's a red square too. See that red square that goes right here? And you can nest it with this square. And on top of that, you can add a photo if you want to. White photo mat or soft white, actually. There should be another smaller red mat that fits there. The largest one is over here above it, the square. There's going to be a black rectangle for this journaling prompt. And from your kit, you'll find a scallop edged heart shaped tag. That'll be placed here. And then once you fussy cut this, it'll fit on there. And I believe I added one of these sweet little teardrop shaped charms to the center of the heart. It was a sweet little accent for that. Then you have the two little pieces down here to kind of carry some black over onto this side. Well-balanced, beautiful page. I've got a, quite a few finishing touches to share with you here. So let's take a look at the page on the right. That's page six. So here on the right, I used my slot punch. That's this guy. So if you don't have one of these, grab a slot punch. It's optional, of course. And then I just found the center of the graphic here and punched a hole into it. Then I threaded this ribbon. Oh, I love this ribbon so much. It has a beautiful silver metallic center. Threaded it through, and then I estimated like how much I would need to reach the, the back of the page for a wraparound, and then just trimmed it. And I might have even attached it with foam adhesive, and yes, I did. I have foam adhesive circles, and that gets placed there, okay? Now at the bottom, I did my little two-part ribbon trick, okay? So once I had my tag placed, or my cut-apart placed on the tag, I 
took us just a loop of that red saddle stitched ribbon and taped it to the back. So that's one piece of the ribbon. The second piece then I just cut and made a little knot in it and stuck it on top with the glue line or you could use book binding glue too. So this is two ribbons. Doesn't look like it because this is right up next to it. It looks like I'm a genius, <laughs> but I'm not. So there you have it. That's my two part ribbon trick. Also covered in my ribbon basics video. The facing page, uh, number five, Nothing really complicated here. Everything's just glued down as you see. The only thing I did was just transfer the ribbon uh, styling over to this side by trimming a, a small piece. So you're talking like, like this. I always check the grain direction of the ribbon. It doesn't want to fold this way. It wants to fold this way. Ribbon has grain just like paper. So then after I determined the ribbon size, I fold it in half and Center that onto the top of this little black piece. Ta-da! Now you don't have to put a picture there. You could you could get a like a silver journaling pen and put um, some journaling on there. Whatever you want. Do it to both of those pieces. It'll be sweeter than sweet. Okay. So now I'm gonna slide this on over, and then the next one over, and that's gonna give us the base for pages three and four. To find our image key equivalent of our puzzle box we have to go back a page now so we're on the bottom of page three here and sure enough we've got the appropriate pieces as the base we'll empty pocket three and four what do we have in here so that was fun to see how everything comes together isn't it I think we need to start out with these corners. So let's grab the corners. And the same is, you're gonna to have to do that same thought process when you have the adhesive. So you also have to look at the layers and say, all right, that's definitely first. And then you kind of have to move everything over, add your adhesive, and then you can keep going to town. Um, I can also pretty confidently say that this, is going to, this black strip is gonna be near the bottom here and nested with this artwork. The other one is gonna be north of center here on this side. How about an aqua photo mat right up here? That's going to determine the height of this piece. Then it should be a shorty, a black one. It's kind of short and wide, but there's going to be a perfect piece. I couldn't believe this when I was trimming all the papers and then trying to figure out what to do with this scrap of the black. It was a weird size. And then I had this smaller piece of red and I'm like, I came over, I'm like, oh man, it fits, it fits perfectly. I'm like, done, it was like the last thing I placed. It was like, it was a perfect moment. I was so happy. Okay, then it's the little things, right? And then we have our um, our soft white photo mat here. And then you should have another piece of red that um, I think I put it over the border strip a little and nested it with the sentiment from the cut apart. I stapled some ribbon to the top of that, which I'll show you in a minute. Next, I'm gonna add two vertical aqua mats so that carries over from this side, right? Now I have all of this other stuff. Let's see, this is gonna go here, the journaling prompt, vertical. And you'll nest this sentiment onto the black. And then this is gonna be like a triangular shape and it's gonna cover, it's gonna cover this piece of art here. It's okay, because this is cooler. I also added a piece of ribbon through there as well. It's kind of crazy. And then you can either have that hanging out on top or behind the mat. That's that's totally up to you. I went behind the mat. So I ran ribbon through here as well. That's the saddle stitch stuff. I ran a piece across here, taped the ends to the back. I glued it in a couple of spots so it wouldn't gap. And then I did the same thing. I ran it behind this frame as well. And it really adds a lot to the page. So let's take a look then. Oh, I added my last little round silver charm. It's like it's made to fit there. Um, really like that. And it's stapled black ribbon. Super easy. On the facing page, ah, these stunning teardrop shape charms. Oh, they're so beautiful. And I use both of them on one page right here and here because mm, they just added so much. So um, again, you can see how that ribbon kind of widens this area a little bit and it goes right behind, right through there with this border strip. So I just had to work sort of carefully to figure out like how to stick everything down. You'll you'll get it. It's, it's not that bad. Okay, that's 
uh, three and four already. So we're gonna take the base of this sheet slide and then one more over. When I'm teaching in a workshop, I have students who are very experienced in this style of, of scrapbooking. And in the time it takes, it's usually about an hour to teach a class of like 30 people um, and some, you know, at varying pace. Some I'm pushing really hard, others are bored because <laughs> I'm not going fast enough. But a blended paced room, my, my experienced scrappers with this method can get everything glued down in that time frame as well as the trimming. It's pretty cool. It's pretty miraculous, really. All right, here we have two horizontal black two vertical red and beautifully they just fit right in the frame I just went with the frame look on this uh, the corner is going to be uh, well before we do that I'm going to have you add this strip to the left of those mats and then a black plain uh, nest with the dotty border and then on top of that we'll add our gorgeous die cut corner and the other die cut corner is over on this side. Across the bottom, kind of what you're doing here is you're making a frame around these two mats, vertical frame, horizontal frame, all tucked in there nicely. I'll add the tag here, and then one of the scalloped edge is gonna come off that side, and then I'm gonna balance that over on the lower right, along with the journaling prompt. Now this gets matted with that black rectangle. Looks really sweet. Of course, you could add maybe the red heart here, the black heart here, <laughs> and then the paisley after it gets fussy cut is right there. Super sweet. Oh, and then I just followed suit and I added the teardrop paisley charm to the heart. And ribbon, of course. Ribbon, but not the same with that saddle stitch. I think it was out of saddle, saddle stitch ribbon by the time I, I decorated these pages. So here we have another one of those lovely three-part bows, once again made with that um, soft cottony ribbon. So pretty. And then here we have just a loop. All I did was create a loop and taped it on the back. Threaded the ribbon on there, like a three-inch piece with an inch and a half hanging up the top here. And then my little teardrop charm over here. We have a repeat of the technique, slot punched into the top of the tag, and then again, wrapped around to the top. It's the same trick I did with the other center of the die cut on, I don't know, was that page five or something like that? And then once everything's stuck down, <laughs> you're good to go. So I'm gonna take this page and slide it onto number one here. And then usually what I do, if I, if I don't plan on assembling it all right away, I make sure I keep the instructions with it or the packing list maybe from your kit. And um, you can add, like top it with the ribbon that you have to still have to work with, slide it all back into the bag, and then you're good to go. So I hope you enjoyed this class. Boy, it went really quickly. I don't even know, it's, it's not that late. It's actually five o'clock my local time on a Thursday night before Christmas. <laughs> Yeah, so now you know my timing. It's not, not a lot of lead time on these kits. So if you liked, maybe this is the first time you tried this method and you're like, hmm, oh, that's weird. So now I have my pages done. I have no idea what I'm gonna put on them. I want to encourage you to still finish your pages. Like I know a lot of my students say, I just don't stick anything down. I don't know what kind of pictures I'm gonna have. I don't know if they're gonna be vertical or horizontal and I just, it won't work if it's not right, you know? But I have, I'm, I've been doing this for a long time and my philosophy is I bring my pictures to my finished pages and it's unbelievable how it really does work. You can crop your photos. If you've got too many horizontal spots and too many vertical photos, you can fit two vertical photos that are cropped in a horizontal spot. It's pretty cool. Now we always show you uh, photos of finished pages. Karen on team here had, does a great job of finishing her layouts every single month. It's a wonderful challenge and she has managed to do it uh, for the last several years. So pay attention to our blog. If you're not following our blog, why aren't you? Check out Karen's finished pages every month. She uh, shares those with us and as well as our Facebook chat group. 
so we do have a private chat group join us there and you'll be able to see the finished layouts shared with from all of the members that we have all over the world so join us there as well and uh, just thank you for tuning into this workshop i hope you liked it if you do give me a thumbs up or maybe leave a nice comment below and of course don't forget to subscribe to our our youtube channel we are posting new videos all the time you don't want to miss anything coming up from club scrap i look forward to seeing you in our next class thanks for joining me